Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Welcome back, pet parents. You are listening to the Pet Parenting Reset, and today we are talking about a holistic approach to healing for our pets and what that is because a lot of people don't know. (laughs) We live in a society today where we treat symptoms. So you go to the doctor or you take your pet to the doctor and, you know, X, Y, Z are your symptoms. Maybe you have a, a stuffy nose and a sore throat and those symptoms are what is treated. Or you take your dog to the vet or your cat to the vet and they have an ear infection. Um, and just topically that infection is treated. But there are underlying causes for all of these symptoms that traditional or allopathic medicine generally doesn't take into account. I brought up ear infections because that is one of the major things, especially with dogs that tend to get, I mean, they just keep happening over and over and over and over and over again. And you take your dog to the vet and they treat the infection over, over and over and over again, but they never treat the underlying cause of what is going on in the body that keeps these ear infections reoccurring or keeps that itchy skin reoccurring or itchy paw pads or red inflamed paw pads. These are some of the most treated symptoms in veterinary medicine today uh, for dogs, especially. And the underlying causes are not being treated. So that's what traditional medicine does. We have a symptom and there's a pill for that, right? Or there's a surgery for that. (laughs) And a holistic approach to pet care, to medical care is much more well-rounded. So let's talk about what a holistic approach is. So holistic health addresses the whole being. So we are looking at the physical, mental, and emotional states of the animal, or even of you, because this, we can extrapolate this to humans as well. But if we're just talking about dogs and cats, we're talking about their physical, mental, and emotional states. And the goal of a holistic approach is to treat the cause of the health issues, not just the symptoms. So All three are connected, right? The physical body, the mental state, the emotional state, these are all connected. You can't separate them. So if the physical being is compromised with a disease or illness, it affects the mental and emotional states as well. So if you think about it, like step back for a moment and think about yourself when you are not feeling good, right? When you're sick, your attitude may not be all that great either because you're sick and it's affecting not just your physical body, but your mental state and your emotional state as well. And you may be a little grumpy, um, irritable. That's all normal because it's all one, right? We cannot separate the physical and the emotional and the emotional and the mental. That's not, it's not possible. So if you think about your dog, How many times have you, now this may have happened to one of your dogs in the past, right? Or you may have heard of this happening to a dog. They're sick and they're not feeling well and they snap at you or some, you know, whoever (laughs) you may have heard this story from because you're, you know, in their space and you're poking and prodding and they don't feel good. Well, guess what? Their mental and emotional states don't feel good either. You can't, you can't separate these now. And it may be easier to, maybe your dog has never snapped at you and that's wonderful. <laughs> um, but if we think about how our dog's emotional and mental state changes, once they start feeling better, that might be uh, something that you can identify a little bit more with. So your dog hasn't been feeling good, right? They're under the weather. Maybe they have a tummy ache or whatever may be going on. But once they start feeling better, 
their energy improves, right? And they're happy and they're playful. And so you see that positive, maybe you see that positive change more than you see the negative change. And that's wonderful, but it's still proof that you can't separate the physical, the emotional, and the mental. They're all connected. They're all one. So when we think about a holistic approach, we're looking at the whole being. We're taking into account physical symptoms. We're taking into, a, into account their emotional state, their mental state. And a holistic approach is going to incorporate natural, alternative, and complementary medicine. So if we think about you know, pharmaceuticals that we get or that our pets get. Now, I am not anti-pharmaceuticals. I am not anti-traditional um, medicine. I think there is absolutely a time and place for all of that. But we also understand, and I th think we have gotten too used to the idea that pharmaceuticals have inherent risks with them. And a lot of times those risks can outweigh the benefit, especially when there are alternative therapies available. So if we think about reach, you know, the way we operate as a society now, we reach for drugs. These drugs all have toxic side effects. But what if we could use herbal medicine or homeopathy, um, maybe acupuncture, chiropractic um, adjustments, energy healing techniques, nutrition, nutritional supplementation, all of these things are part of a holistic approach to healthcare, to the care of the overall being. And even if there aren't physical ailments that we need to address, there may be emotional, mental, behavioral issues that need to be addressed. And there are incredible holistic approaches to those as well, including flower essences like Bach flower essences might be one of the ones that you're most familiar with. Crystal therapy, color therapy, um, tapping, or even animal communication. With a holistic approach, we're also going to assess the environment and the diet. And the more and more I talk about um, a holistic approach, I have been realizing over the past few months that I am very much a holistic dog trainer. <laughs> I don't just go in and try to teach cues, I look at the whole dog and I treat the whole dog and I help people with so many different things. And I think it's, it's an underserved industry. Um, but that's just a side note, <laughs> because as we look at a holistic approach to healthcare, we have to assess the environment and we have to assess the diet. So having a low stress environment, having an environment that is as free as possible of toxins and chemicals. Um, having an environment that is enriching to our pets is so incredibly important. And nutrition, we talk about nutrition so much because it is, I mean, it can literally change everything for our pets. I, it's one of the first things I talk about with people when I'm doing in-home training. And for those people, which is the majority of the people I've worked with who opt to change their pets' nutrition, to change their diet and provide them better nutrition, I see incredible changes in these dogs over the weeks as we're working together, not just physically, but behaviorally as well. So how do we actually implement holistic care into our pets' lives? Well, there are lots of different ways. And one of the really great things about holistic care is that you can actually start to implement a lot of these changes in your pet's life on your own. So we can start providing a better diet for our pets, right? We can ditch a lot of the carbs and starches and high sugar content, grain filled junk <laughs> and start implementing and start providing fresh whole foods for our pets. That's one way that you can start right now. We can clean up the environment, right? So maybe we have a bunch of stuff around. Maybe our house is just full and overloaded with stuff. We can start to declutter. We can clean more regularly. We can um, start using homemade chemical-free cleaners in our home instead of buying all those chemicals and bringing them into our home. We can stop using plug-ins and candles and air fresheners because those are 
more than more than not <laughs> the majority of them are not great there are some candles out there that are pet friendly they're going to be made with um like a, a soy or a beeswax and they're not going to have lid wicks so that doesn't mean you have to get rid of everything but a lot of what we buy is not healthy not it's not healthy for us either by the way so you're probably going to see a lot of changes in yourself when you make these changes for your pets we can start implementing color therapy. We can research crystals and buy different crystals to have around the house to increase the vibrational energy around the home. We, if, if we need help physically as well, or even behaviorally, you can seek out positive reinforcement trainers or um, holistic behaviorists in your area. For medical care, you can seek out holistic veterinarians. Now, they, you may not be able to find one that you can, that's really close to you, that you can go into their office and see them, but there are holistic veterinarians that do telehealth. And that may be one way where you can start implementing holistic healthcare um, into your, your pet's routine, right? Now, I've talked a couple of times very recently about having a medical team for your pet. So while you may have a traditional veterinarian that you go into their office, to see them, to have your pet um, checked out physically and blood work done. You can also have a holistic veterinarian or even a homeopathic veterinarian that you do telehealth conferences with to provide them the information from your traditional veterinarian and come up with a game plan that everybody is on board with. There are also veterinarians out there that offer acupuncture, um, acupressure, chiropractic adjustments. These are all ways that we can help our pets by treating the whole body and not just tackling symptoms. So I would love to hear from you to find out what, first of all, if you even knew about holistic healthcare, what that was, how it was different from traditional veterinary medicine, um, before <laughs> listening to this podcast. Also, how you would like to implement holistic health care in your pet's life, um, life or lives, depending on how many pets you have. And if there's a specific area of interest within the holistic health care approach that you want to learn more about, whether that is nutrition, acupuncture, acupressure, um, homeopathy. I would, I, I, yeah, I think I have um, an intro to homeopathy coming up soon on the podcast because I am just incredibly interested in that as well. I, I, we talk about nutrition a lot, but it's always something. There is, there is always more to talk about. So we can certainly talk about that more. Um, we can talk about it as it relates to dogs, as it relates to cats, um, both in the same episode, that's fine too. Let me know where your interests lie with approaches to holistic healthcare, and we can have some different podcast episodes and get some guests on here that specialize in these areas of expertise that I think would be incredibly, incredibly interesting uh, to have on the podcast. The best way to reach, of course, you can reach out on any socials, Instagram, um, what are the other, so I don't even know where the other socials are. There's so many social media networks now, but uh, Patreon is going to be the best way to get in touch. So Patreon is a really cool social media platform because you actually get the content you sign up for. And what's really amazing is that um, you there are different tiers. So there are different levels at which you can join any creator, right? And uh, so the, my lowest tier is just a dollar a month because I think that is a really great intro that anybody can access and you get so much content over there. Like the, you get all of the regular content, you get behind the scenes content, exclusive content, you get first look at content. So it's a really incredible platform and one that um, I was really excited to bring on because you actually get the content you sign up for, which is not always the case with a lot of these other platforms. So I hope to see you over there. Go to the petparentingreset.com and right at the top of the page there, you can click on Patreon. Or if you're already on Patreon, um, just you know, if you're following other creators on Patreon, that's wonderful. Just search um, either my name, Jessica Fisher, or the Pet Parenting Reset to find me and add me there as well. So with that, I think that's a pretty good overview of what a holistic approach to pet care is, why I find it so interesting, and why I've adopted it um, for my pets. 
it's also very empowering to know that I have so much more control over how happy and healthy my pets are. You know, 10, 15 years ago, it was, I was so reliant on the veterinarian and I was just talking to a friend the other day about, you know, veterinarians are so overutilized. So as a society, we rely on them for everything for our pets. And as a result, they're stressed, they're overworked. They, they have some of the highest suicide rates of any um, profession in the United States, in the first world, um, not just in the United States. And it's because we are not taking personal responsibility for our pets' healthcare. We rely on them for everything. And that's not that's not how this is supposed to work. Um, and it, it's also because it's something that they, they can't, they don't live with your pet. They, and, and when they are so overworked and so overloaded, they don't even have time to learn about new things. They don't have the time or the energy to figure out anything outside of what they were taught in vet school and are required to take you know, for continuing education, um, which <laughs> is, is not a whole heck of a lot. And so there's, there's a world of knowledge out there that our veterinarians have access to, but don't have the time or energy to access. <laughs> and it's, it's really unfortunate. Our pets suffer in the end, um, because ultimately, because we're not, it's, it's a personal responsibility issue, but that's for a whole other podcast. In fact, I think we're going to do, um, I think we're going to do a round table on that in the near future. So yeah, holistic healthcare is, is incredible. It's so empowering. I highly recommend that you take more of an active role in your pet's health and in their care, because it it's really at, at the end of the day, they rely on us and we're the ones that live with them and we know them the best. So we really are in the best position to, to be their biggest advocate and to learn and help them as much as possible. So <laughs> with that, I'm going to go ahead and end today's podcast episode. Uh, again, I hope to, I hope to see you over on Patreon. We have a really close knit a uh, little family over there. And even with the, you know, you can get in for as little as a dollar a month and there is, there are so many benefits there. So hope to see you over there and yeah, make sure to check us out on rumble as well. There are additional videos going up every week, um, on YouTube as well, but I would highly recommend, uh, checking out rumble if you haven't already. So with that guys, have a great rest of your day, a great rest of your week. Give your pets some extra love from me. Until next time. Bye guys. Oh, oh.